Hey guys, it's Amy with 804 Sycamore, and this uh, wall plate rack was kind of a spontaneous project. I was um, looking at our uh, range and thinking about uh, a hood design, and this wall was driving me nuts, so I thought, you know what, let's, let's do a plate rack. And so I went and got the wood and cut it all. Now, every good design starts with a sketch and lots of measurements, and so that's what I would encourage you to do is when you find the wall that you want to build a plate rack onto, um, measure twice and um, really make sure to get it the right size. I did not build this out wall to wall. Um, I wanted it in a little bit and I also didn't want it going all the way to the ceiling and it needed to clear our baseboards. I did not remove baseboards um, and I also wanted all of my wood to be perfect and so I used the clamping method to really make sure that nothing was off I didn't um, I couldn't you can't have any gaps so um, anyways the top goes all the way across and then the rest of the shelves go inside your boards and so um, I went ahead and used one by threes I did not want it sticking out too far I wanted it really low profile and sticking with my design I kind of set up my boards now not exact because right now I'm just marking where I want to make pocket holes and for the pocket holes I didn't want to have to plug them I didn't want anyone to see them and so that top shelf the pocket holes are on top because it's way too high for anyone to see but most of the others are underneath so that they are um, hidden go ahead and do your pocket holes and follow the instructions for the thickness of your wood now I'm using a one by three and so I just go with the three quarter inch um, and I love this uh, pocket hole jig because it saves my shoulder it's very ergonomic and I just set up my uh, shop vac to it and it sucks all the stuff out so I highly recommend it you just have to make sure that that clamp stays tightened it can get loose after several uses um, so anyways uh, now I am just getting everything um, cut. I like to get all my cuts done at once. Now these are the boards that I'm going to use to attach to the walls. So um, I, I just, I think when you um, have everything set up, if you can cut everything at once, it makes it easier for cleanup and just kind of staying focused, getting everything right. And that way you can lay out your pieces as you go just to make sure that you have everything and it looks right and it's set up right now here are the little bits that are going to be um, the plate rack fronts and so what that does is it prevents things from falling out but you could use any type of board I just use this trim because I liked this uh, simple detail um, I also like the price it was 76 cents in a foot and so um, I thought that was a great price and it was just kind of delicate. Now you could double it up and have two bars. It's totally up to you, however you wanna customize the style of your plate rack. Now something I should mention here is I used pocket hole construction because I didn't want to nail every piece of wood to the wall. I, I um, installed this plate rack using four screws and so if I ever wanna remove it, that's only four screw holes to patch. So with the pocket hole construction, you need to use wood glue. That will give you know, your connection um, extra strength. I've seen some tests done and it is always better with wood glue. However, I will say if any squishes out, you really wanna wipe that up quickly because it will affect the stain. Um, the stain doesn't soak through my glue spots. And I've noticed that with a few projects um, it's not a big deal to me. I'm not a perfectionist that way, but um, it is important to not over glue, but make sure you glue. So I like to use a couple boards so that I can use my clamp. Um, it, it allows me to get my clamp under there. It, it, I did have a little helper holding this because it is quite long and um, you, you, know, you don't want it to tip and crack and all that stuff. So um, I just used one and a half inch um, Craig screws and I did two at each joint and so once you create the entire frame that's when you can um, go ahead and then attach 
the, the inner pieces. So right now I'm doing this bottom piece and I'm using the, my helper was gone, so I went ahead and used the wall to lean it up. Um, and I, I don't show it in the video, but I did have a couple um, oopsies. I, this whole frame fell down. I was lucky it didn't crack or break. Um, but you really need to um, be careful and consider having a helper help you out. Um, especially if you have wider pieces, it's going to be um, probably top heavy and be able to pull. So I actually don't prefer these Craig screws. I, I like the, um, the ones that fit all the way into my pocket hole. These ones have a different head on them. It was all I had on hand. And like I said, this was a spontaneous project. So, um, I wish I would have tested the screws. You can see right now I am using a board and I actually cut this board 18.25 inches, uh, 18 and a quarter there. Um, like I said, when you sketch out your design, you know exactly how you want it to line up. And I had some switches on the walls, um, on the wall that I needed to clear. And so measuring was very important and I, I like using a board because I'll use this board um, on both sides just to make sure that those shelves are level and good. Now, when you're attaching this, make sure that the shelf is flush on both sides. That seems like a, a no-brainer, but I have um, been in such a hurry before and just um, it's been hot and I, I clamped it and it was off and that was very frustrating. So make sure that it's flush and ready to go. And once you have one side done, flip it around. Now you can see I'm using some trash cans to kind of hold this up. Um, it's not ideal, but it did work. And then I just used that same board to help guide the distance. And, and my middle shelf is about a foot. And so it's um, quite a bit smaller than the 18 inch shelves, but it's how I wanted my design to go because of the switches along the wall there. Now for my, um, my, these boards, I went ahead and did the pocket holes along the back side. I did not do any across the top. Um, I felt like it was flush enough and just gravity would help pull it down. But these are the boards that I'm going to use to screw the whole plate rack into the wall. Once you're all done, give your piece a sanding if it needs it. And then I always pre use pre-stain wood conditioner. It just helps get a nice even stain. And then I love this early uh, Americana color by Verathane. It's um, warm, but not too warm. And it um, it's just the perfect base tone for my whitewashing step. And I always use a 220 sanding sponge to, after every um, layer of stain. It, the stain kind of opens the pores of the wood and sanding it smooths it all out. So with the bare um, water-based wood stain, it's the, the whitewash pickling stain, You it says leave it on for a little bit and then wipe it off. And um, I would say that that really depends on how well your wood is soaking it up. So you could always do a test, but after I wi wiped it on, then I wiped it off with that staining sponge. And this is the final outcome I got, which I have several pieces in our home. This color, absolutely love it. It warms things up. It adds that nice vintage farmhouse styles that I really love. So right now I marked two spots on this top brace and then two spots on the bottom. And I always like to um, pre-drill my pilot holes and I didn't have studs on this wall. And so I had to use anchors. Uh, once you I, I actually stacked some boards on the bottom there to make sure that I was clearing the baseboards and I could attach this flush to the wall. So that's a consideration to make as well. Um, but go ahead and pilot drill. And I went all the way through the boards and into the wall because this is gonna show me where I need to add my anchors. Like I said, I did not have studs. And so I went ahead and drilled a little bit bigger pilot hole um, for these self-drilling anchors and I like how these just go flush with the wall. I've had great luck with them and then once those are in I like to get the screw in um, just a bit poking out just a bit so that can help me kind of line it up with the anchor 
Now, I just used silver uh, sheetrock screws. It's what I had on hand. I don't think it looks bad. I don't even notice it. Um, but there are other ways to do it if you don't want shiny silver screw heads um, on your piece. And so um, you can, yeah. So um, that's the way I have it. And once all four are lined up, and in place, you're, you're ready for the next step. And that's adding the rails. Now, I add the rails last because they are attached with brad nails. Um, and I hold the brad nail gun like this because if the nail tweaks out, it's not going to come out of the wood. Um, it comes out left and right. And I use this board to help me level it. It helps saving time on measuring and marking and all that business. I just use the board and it's perfectly level on both sides and I attached it with two brad nails. And so as you can see, this is what it looks like with one rail um, going across and nothing is actually leaning against the rails except for maybe one cutting board, but it's kind of balanced. Um, one of my silver trays possibly, but you can see two of them would, look, would also look nice. Um, there's different trim pieces to give kind of a different look but I absolutely love this, you guys. And when I'm done with it, I wanna take it out. I only have to patch four holes. So I hope you like this video. Please give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.